Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release, The Color Out of Space, or I'm sorry, Color Out of Space, uh, to be exact. Now, this one was done by Richard Stanley. Thank goodness Richard Stanley has come back. For people who don't know, although if you're pretty plugged into the horror community, you probably already know this, Richard Stanley took a very long hiatus from filmmaking after he made the film uh, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Well, he didn't even complete it. There's a really good documentary about it. I think it's called Lost Soul. Um, look into it. I, it. I originally saw it on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there because that was years ago. But I think it's called Lost Soul and something about the island of Dr. Moreau in the title. But it's a documentary about how Richard Stanley tried to get that film going. All the things that went wrong. What turned him, him off of film for like 20 years or so, like actually doing film, but he was an up and coming director at that point. He had been highly praised for his films, Dust Devil and Hardware. And I've seen Dust Devil. I've not seen Hardware yet, but I do plan to. So my point being, it's really great to see him back after a long hiatus and being so turned off of film. And this is a good film for him to come back with because I quite enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to do, this isn't going to be a spoiler review per se, but I'm going to talk about kind of thematic stuff in it so that might spoil the thematic things if you want to go in 100 blind but i'm not going to tell you about the events of the film so i won't be spoiling that aspect of it so anyway also just so people know um there's a interview with uh richard stanley that mick garris did for the post-mortem podcast with mick garris definitely check that out i had listened to that a while back um when this film had come out and Richard Stanley on that talks about how he came to make this film, um, about writing the script and about directing it, and kind of his mindset uh, going into it, which is very important, I think, for really putting things into context and seeing what the film actually is. Now, to give you that background, if you don't already know or haven't heard that interview, he wrote it because, A, he had a childhood filled with Lovecraft. His, he and his mother would read Lovecraft, and he, you know, was a big fan of, of his stories. Now, it's been very, very hard for people to put Lovecraft, especially so certain stories of Lovecraft, into the film version of it, although people would point to things like Reanimator and say that Reanimator is like the best Lovecraft-inspired film ever done. Now people are saying Color Out of Space is really well done. Um... A, a thing like Color Out of Space, people have said, is hard to do just because there's a lot in the stories, apparently, that are not easy to do visually. Uh, it's more of like dread and unknowns and space-related horrors that the human brain has a hard time kind of comprehending, and therefore it's very, very hard to put into film. So, yeah. So just know that. So he, he loved Lovecraft. Uh, he would do it with his mom, read it with his mother all the time. And then after he lost his mother to cancer is when he was working on this film. And he, you know, part of his terrible ordeal, seeing his mother being taken by cancer and the, the degradation that it does to, to a loved one mentally and physically is kind of what brought him to, you know, making the script in addition to, you know, his love of Lovecraft and that shared love with his mother. So it's important to know that watching the film because it gives it more context, in my opinion. So um, it was written by Richard Stanley. Obviously, it was directed by Richard Stanley, but also written by him and Scarlett Amaris, uh, obviously based on Color Out of Space, the story by H.P. Lovecraft. Stars Nicolas Cage. He's the biggest star in this by far, and I know people have really been loving some Nicolas Cage, especially with, like, Mandy, which, by the way, this film is put out by Spectre Vision, who also put out Mandy, and there are, like, visually some similarities between the two, especially, like, color usage, which is really interesting to me, and the Nick Cage, you know, experience. So if you liked Nick Cage in Mandy, you'll probably like Nick Cage in Color Out of Space. Just saying. So there are five other films, you need to know this, five other films came out in 2019 with Nick Cage in it. So he had six films he was in come out in 2019. That's crazy. This dude is still really, really, really working. He's putting it in. Good for him. Um, Stanley says this is actually the first in a trilogy of Lovecraft, Lovecraft films that he hopes to make. Uh, the next one he's going to work on is based on the Dunwich Horror. 
obviously know their Lovecraft, because it's all about the Lovecraft. The budget for this was $12 million, and it made a little bit under a million. So financially not a success, but um, it's getting a lot, a lot, a lot of love since it made it to DVD and Blu-ray. So I'm sure it's going to be all right. Uh, oh, and by the way, if people didn't know, Spectre Vision, the company that put this out, out uh, the production company, is owned by Elijah Wood. I don't know if people knew that, but I feel like a lot of people know that at this point. So the actual film, um, they they very, very early on have some tie-in, have a tie-in to Lovecraft stories. They reference the city of Arkham, which is something that's used a lot in Lovecraft stories. And then later on, there's actually a character who's wearing a Miskatonic University shirt. So it's just these kind of cool nods to Lovecraft um, that I like quite a bit. I actually have a Miskatonic University Historical Society shirt that I you can probably see I've worn in some of my reviews. It's a really cool one. Um, if you know Stanley's history with Lovecraft and his mother's passing from cancer, this film seems very personal. And I already talked about that, but it does feel very personal. If you keep that in mind while you're watching the film, um, you can feel how personal it is. Everything feels very remote with beautiful cinematography fo focusing on nature very early on in the film. It's very important, that aspect of it being very remote and closed off and a, a close uh, connection with nature, the characters, that is. And I'll talk a little bit about the connection with nature. Uh, the family's established in a believable way with their dynamic established very, very early. Them as a cohesive family unit, how they interact with each other. Uh, it feels very believable. They feel like real characters. And they take enough time to actually help you understand who they are as people and how they communicate with each other and how they feel about each other. So it's a good setup for the actual characters so that when things start going crazy, you care more. It works. Good writing. There's a point of starting to feel obsolete and less wanted as you age that's made in this. There are actually a lot of points made in this film. It's not just a few overarching themes. It's a few uh, quick moments of other points being made, and this is one of them. A kind of feeling of as you age, you're kind of aging out of life. You're aging out of society. You're you're having less of a usefulness. People don't want you as much. You start to feel obsolete, and sometimes that's based off of how society treats you or how other people treat you, but sometimes it's based on just your own personal feeling, and it's not really based on anything else happening, you know, outside of your own brain. But there's, that's an interesting point that's made in this film. The color is described, because as we all know, it's color out of space. It literally has to do with a color coming out of space. That's not a spoiler. If you've seen the trailer, it's 100% in there. And actually, you know, if you know the title, it's 100% in there. But anyway, so the color that comes out of space is described by Nathan, Nicolas Cage's character, as pink at first. But then he says it's a color he's never seen before. This shows the natural human reaction of tr of trying to tie everything to something you already know, but some things don't fit into what humans know. And I thought this was a really interesting moment because his initial reaction is to make sense of what's going on. And that's any human's initial reaction is trying to make sense of what's going on. And how do you do that? You tie it to what you already know. But then he steps back and he says, well, it's not like any color I've ever seen. And that's kind of an indicator that the, it, it's something else and that's kind of an indicator of doubt kind of creeping in and saying you know maybe what I know is out the window at this point and that and that plays to the audience as well one of the characters in this film at one point is holding a book up and you can see the title clearly and it is called The Willows now this is a book written by Algernon Blackwood I looked it up uh, who influenced the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, by the way. This particular book, The Willows, ties in very closely to Color Out of Space. So if you know the story, you know where the film is going. So showing that book in the film is a very clear indicator of what is going to happen. Not the exact events, but, you know, the underlying uh, progression of the film, what is going on. So... I would say don't look it up prior to seeing the film. Look it up after seeing the film. There's a kind of horrific moment where you know things have turned and a terrible impact is actually starting. And it's um, 
it's not played out super horrifically. That's why I said kind of horrific. Like, the thing that happens is horrific, but everything around it seems much less horrific. It's downplayed quite a bit, which is an interesting moment film-wise. There's a noise used in here from time to time that sounds like tinnitus. You know, when you get that, like, ringing in your ear uh, that you kind of can't can't explain why it's happening. So I was looking into tinnitus a little bit because I was like, it sounds definitely like tinnitus because I've had that. Um, and it's a problem. They say, medically speaking, it's not a problem itself, but it is an indicator, a potential symptom of other underlying problems. Now, some of the stuff they said is, you know, having trauma to the ears, uh, but also just aging in general. But I think it's in there as just like an indicator, especially early on in the film, of a symptom popping up to indicate that there is something wrong, that something has changed, that there's an event that has occurred that has kicked this tinnitus off and and things are there's an underlying thing that needs to be addressed basically that's creating this symptom the pink and purple colors in this look great and they're used in very very cool ways the color is amazing and the combination of the pinks and purples are really really cool and then at at certain points they also mix in a little bit of blue so it looks great and well and that's in general, like, the directing is really good in this, the cinematography is really good, the practical effects when they're done are really good, and the CG used in this are, it's used in interesting ways, and it looks really good. So overall, visually, a very nice film. There's a point uh, of when, there's a point made that when communication is hindered or non-existent, things tend to rapidly break down. And I think that's kind of a pointed message that's kind of put to, you know, now with society, forever with society, is when you don't effectively communicate or you can't, there's so much room for issues to occur based off of that inability to communicate or just communicate properly. Cage's acting, by the way, makes me laugh sometimes. Uh, he has really weird ways of delivering certain things, and that's definitely on display in this film. But I like that. I think it's a quirky thing. I think it's kind of fun to have those weird line deliveries because it's kind of funny, but it doesn't take you out of the film. It doesn't ruin anything. If anything, it kind of adds to it by being quirky. So I like that. This raises a point of how sensitive the human body is to stimuli and raises a question of how much buildup of foreign bodies the human body can take before the whole system basically goes haywire. Now, it's interesting because it kind of feels to me like there are two levels in this film, and it's the human body level, and it's the body of nature, as in Mother Nature, as in the entire Earth, that are having the same thing occur at the same time. And it's how does the Earth react, how does the human body react? Now, there's also a pointed message here about things like pollutants, like, how much of a pollutant do you think that human bodies can take before it builds up to a point that there are negative reactions to it? Um, but then it's not just that. It's, you know, chemicals. It's pollutants. It's, you know, natural stimulation from things outside the body, things that work their way inside the body in different ways. It just kind of makes you think about that whole idea of foreign bodies because foreign bodies can be a lot of things. I mean, even allergens you know when when pollen gets into your body that causes reactions that aren't i mean I, I was gonna say aren't beneficial to your body but it doesn't feel good it changes you it makes you it makes you live differently in a in a less comfortable way and then also to that point you know going back to what i was saying partially inspired the script for stanley cancer you know the foreign body of cancer getting into the body and spreading so i think that's a play over well you can get an extended Kate, uh, Nicolas Cage freakout scene in this, kind of like Mandy, but toned back a lot. Um, so for all you people who watch Mandy and you like that Nicolas Cage freakout scene, you get a much lesser version of that, but it's fun to watch in this. There's some echoes of the film The Thing in this. Echoes. It's not like 100% or anything, but if you see it, you will know what I mean. There appears to be an aspect of dementia explored in this film as well, which is shown heavily in a scene toward the end. Now, I think this may be tied into what had gone on with Richard Stanley and his mother, that that particular scene was kind of inspired by that, just because 
in the podcast uh, interview I listened to with um, Mick Garris, he had kind of talked about the degradation of his mother physically, but also mentally um, because of the cancer. So I think that that dementia, what I think is kind of making a point about dementia and how, you know, weird and sometimes, you know, heartbreaking it basically is. I think that's kind of where it probably spawns from. Lots of visual effects in the end uh, that are really interesting, really cool. It's like a visual explosion, basically, at the end. And it's very engaging. You know, sometimes you have in films where there's a lot of uh, interesting, cool stuff going on. And then by the time you get to the end of the film, it kind of peters out. And you're just like, oh, okay. But this one's not that way. I feel like it keeps you interested all the way through. And the end is a good payoff, in my opinion. And at least visually... It is very, very engaging at the end. Most engaging at the end, I would argue. So all the technical components of this film I thought were really good. Like I talked about, you know, cinematography, directing, acting, all that type of stuff. Really good. Uh, the CG and the practical effects use so good. It's kind of a slow pace to this film, but you actually need that for the realistic gradual buildup of the actual story. Also the development, uh, introduction and development of the characters and their relationships and changes that occur with those relationships. So it is kind of slow. It's an hour and 50 minute film. So um, it seems like maybe it's kind of long, but it doesn't feel that long, even though you're very cognizant of the fact that it is kind of slow paced. You need it for this story though. It works. There's such a focus on nature in this and the characters all have strong ties to nature in different ways. There's a witchcraft tie. There's um, communing with nature through marijuana there's farming and there's animal husbandry in this. But there's also modern draws that are seeking to pull people away from their connection to nature. Those being things like video games, fast food, and telework. Nathan, who's Nicolas Cage's character in this, Nathan Gardner, is the only one who doesn't have a modern connection, which is very interesting. It kind of paints him as more of a in-tune-with-nature individual, which, you know, may lead, may, may leave him a little more open to certain things. That's all I'm going to say. I want to be cryptic about it. Hopefully that was cryptic enough. Um, Mother Earth has a foreign body embed itself and changes occur, which feels like cancer. This kind of goes back to what I was saying about, you know, how many foreign bodies can the human body take, but how many foreign bodies can the Earth take, basically. It changes the natural state of things, but also how the infected body interacts with things around it. Now, anytime you have, you know, an infection or you have, like I was talking about allergens or just foreign bodies or chemicals build up in your body or in nature, it elicits different responses. And that goes from a normal state, uh, a normal static state where things are comfortable and easy to an elevated state where things become more erratic, things become more disturbing, more dangerous. Um, they change, and and a lot of in in those instances, they're usually not changing for the good. They're changing negatively, at the least in an uncomfortable way. Now, my last thought on this is: What if everything we know is flipped on its head, and our senses can't be trusted any longer? How do we deal with that? And I think that's a very key set of questions that are at play in this film. And I think that's one of the coolest things about this film, in my opinion. Like I was saying earlier, people say that Lovecraft is really, really hard to adapt to film because it deals with these types of concepts of trying to um, visualize, trying to process something that you don't know, something that doesn't fit into normal human knowledge, something that's from out, out of this world, basically, a color out of space in this instance. And what happens when that shows up and it doesn't line up with what we know. It doesn't line up with what is normal for our senses. You have a hard time processing what's going on or what's in front of you or what's going on around you. And that's one of the interesting things about this film. For that reason, though, I think while you're watching the film, you can have a lot of moments of confusion. I felt a lot of the time when I was watching this, like, I know what's going on on the screen, but I was trying to think, like, what's really going on? Like, thematically, what's trying to be said? And um, what what else is going on past what we can't see on the screen here? 
and story-wise what's really going on. And it's just, it gets confusing at times. And you feel like you start to like lag lag behind a little bit with the film because you're still trying to think about something that just happened while the film still moves. So for this reason, I think this film would probably need more watches. I only watch it once when I'm doing this review because that's how I do reviews, but um, I think it can use many more watches. I think you'll catch other things when you go through it. And for that reason, I think this could be a good one for me to do one of my discussion live streams. Um, Cause there's a lot, there's a lot of material there. It's very dense in that sense. So uh, I dig this film. Obviously I really did now out of five stars with half stars in play. What am I going to give it? Um, it's not a perfect film. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, but I did quite like it. I'm going to give it a four star rating. Um, I, I did quite like it. I thought the themes were very interesting. Now, you know what? I'm going to bump it up. It's four. It's got to be four and a half for me at the moment. The more I think about it, and I do think about it quite a bit after watching it. Yeah, it's going to be a four and a half stars for me. It's really good. Um, yeah, and that's what makes sense to, to me rating wise. So thanks everyone for checking this out real quick. Do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button if you like anything I do, this review or any other reviews. I appreciate that. It keeps me going. Uh, if you're already subscribed, hit that thumbs up just to let me know that you're still watching. Put some comments down there, certainly if you want to talk about this film. I will warn people. I will allow spoilers in the comments. So if you haven't seen the film, don't look at the comments. Then go watch the film. Come back. Then we can comment and we can talk about spoilers down there. So let's talk. But thanks, everyone, for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.